Okay, good afternoon, y'all, to Mamu Javis, and then um, we are trying to look at the GS3 exam experience, and uh, which is called Grade Nine uh, BECE exams, and um, we'll be looking at it in the sphere of what is obtainable in River State. We we'll look at the exams as we take them in rivers State. So we will be starting with. 2020 theory questions essentially we're going to be trying to see how we answer questions and try to produce answers that our examiners would mark and be glad in it we'll go to 2012 straight away and then we'll try to answer all the questions in that um, year now question one says factorize the expression now, anytime you hear the word factorize, essentially we are looking at two aspects of maths. Is that we're looking at arithmetic or we're looking at algebra? So, anytime you hear the word factorize, know the branch of maths that is being tested. So, we'll look at question one. Uh, some of our, our recording may not be too tech because the objective is to try to solve the questions. And um, because uh, we're starting next, we're starting maths. We're having maths on Wednesday of next week and we're trying to prepare us and to get us right for this exam. Now the question says, question one, factorize the expression pi r squared plus 2 pi r. So I'll write the question on the board, pi r squared plus 2 pi r. That's the question we are told to answer. And it says after that, find the value of the expression when pi is 3.142, pi is given at 3.142, and we are also told that r is equal to 5. Now, these are what I call the details of the question. These are the what? The details of the question. So, when you read a question, so we'll be looking at the, uh, what I've called the, um, the details of the question. One is factorization. We want you to do factorization and then what? Substitution. So, if you ask to factorize, what it means to factorize is that look at this and fact, figure out what is common. I'm seeing pi here. I'm seeing pi here. So, pi is obviously what? Common. I'm seeing r here. I'm seeing r here. Meaning that what? r is also what? Common. So, what I do in my next line, I use equal to sign. I pick out pi. I pick out r. What will be left here? If I take one arrow from here, I'll be left with one arrow. If I take pi from here, I'll be left with no pi there. Plus, I take what? Pi from here, arrow from here, and I'll be left with what? Two. So I'll have that what? Pi arrow squared, we're not going to what? Arrow plus two. This is what it means to factorize. So technically, it means that the factors here are what? Pi and what? Arrow. Remember that we're not just solving, we're also solving so that the examiner can understand what we are doing. This is what the examiner expects you to do in this question. Nothing more than that. Now, the second part of the question now says we should do what? Substitute by taking into consideration that pi is what? 3.142 and then r is what? 2. So what do you do? Take it gradually, one at a time. I will pick pi, 3.142 times. This pi arrow means pi times what? Arrow. I will pick arrow now. Arrow is what? 5 times. I will open this bracket. What is arrow? 5 times, sorry, plus. What is this? 2. Don't be in a hurry. This will now be what? 3.142 times 7 times 5. Sorry about that. And times what? 7. What's the next thing you do? Some of us. When we get here, we may now say multiply this two and then multiply this. But I will advise you, at this point in the exam, don't copy anybody. I always tell students, use, work to your strength. Work to your what? Your strength. It's important. So if I were you at this point, I will come here because you're not allowed to use calculator. I will do this. I will then do this. This will be zero, carry of one. Four times five is what? 20 plus 1, 21. I have a carry of 2. 2 plus 5 times 1, that will be 5. Plus 1 plus 2, that will be 7. Point. 
I'm not carrying anything. So 3 times 5 becomes what? 15. Then I will now multiply that now by 7. Do it gradually. It's method. You'll be any max for that. This will now be what? 0. 1 times 7 will give me what? 7. 7 times 7 will give me what? 9. Carry of what? 4. Now to that 4, I will add it to what I get when I multiply 5 times 7. 5 times 7 will give me what? 35. 35 plus 4 gives me what? 35 plus 4 will give me what? 39. Now please, there's something I want to draw your attention to when you're working. This part of your answer booklet. I'll be taking you especially on answer booklet and how to answer questions with answer booklet. But this, that's not the objective of this class. The spaces you have here are to do your, what I call your small, small rough work. Your brain may not be a computer. Work at your strength. It's so important when you are solving math. You work at your strength. So at this point, what do I now do? I have 39 here. So I'll do what? I'll put down what? Um, uh, 9. Carry of what? Carry of what? 3. 1 times 7 is what? 7 plus 3. That will give me what? 10. The next thing I will do is to count the number of decimal places I have used. If you check, how do you know what to count? You call me here. One, two, three. I see that. One, two, three. So you come from here. One, two, three. And that means my answer becomes what? A hundred and nine point nine seven. Nine seven. You can put zero there. You can decide to ignore the zero. But that's not the end of the problem. This is where examiners throw your balance. Go back to the question and check. Were you asked to approximate to any number of significant figures? Were you asked to approximate to the nearest decimal, nearest whole number, whatever? Some of us, we don't check. And that's why sometimes we fail some of these questions. So check that. I've seen from the uh, question that that was not told me. So what I'll just simply do at the end, I will just come to the bottom and say, well, 109.97, and I close out my answer. And that's all. For question number one. All right, we look at question two. And in question two, in question two, we are told to divide the sum of these numbers and by the award mean. We are told to divide the sum of these numbers by their mean. So first of all, we need to look for their me. Look for, look for their me. Okay, so sum these numbers and divide it by their me. So the first, there are two things here. We are told to sum and we are told to find me. That's it. Sum the numbers and do what? Divide it by their mean. I'm going to solve it through, but for a very smart student, eh, you would have just looked at the question and you'd have gotten the answer. Wow. Wow. But that notwithstanding, let's try to solve it the hard way, and then we'll now solve it the smart way. Look at this. So in adding this, it will now be sum will be equal to, you pick them, 8 plus 6 plus 7 plus 2 plus 0 plus 4 plus 7, plus 2, plus 3. The next important thing is to count the numbers you have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I hope there are 9 numbers there. So if I'm correct, what would the sum be? I'll pick them. 14, 21, 23, 27, 30, 32, 35. Please confirm for me. We we'll take it again. 14, 21, 23, 27, 30. Okay, 34, good. 36 and 37. All right, so we're, we're spot on on that. That's 37. 39. All right, let's take it again. 14. 21, 
36, 39. All right, so there's no problem. We have 39. Now, with 39, we're done with that. All right, so we have 39. Now, how do you get me? Me is actually sum over what? Number of items. How many items do you have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that will be the sum, which is 39, over the number of items, which is what? 9. Now, they say you should divide the sum. So, uh, finally, I told to divide the sum by the words mean. So, what is the sum? 39 divided by what? 9 over what? So, divided by. 39 over 9. And your final answer will be what? 9. Because this would mean, let's, let's interpret it. This actually means 39 divided by 39 over 9. And if you multiply, this will switch to become 39 over 9 times what? 9 over 39 divided by what? 39, 9 over 39. And this simply will be what? 9. A smart student would have seen that the question is asking him to just look for what? The number of items there. So, um, the, the learning point here is this. Why we may want you to show this working? The learning point here is that you should be able to picture what your answer should be. You must learn it. You should be able to picture what your answer will be. And this can only come when you understand the question. Divide the sum by the mean. What is the mean? The mean is the sum divided by the number of the items. So it is more like sum divided by sum over number of items. And what happens? The right hand side will turn. You now have sum times number of items over sum. Sum will go with sum. And you have number of items as your answer. So you really need to think. Think. Be one step ahead when you're solving in an examination hall. So that's the that's the answer to the question. The answer is just nine. And then we are home and dry with that question. In question three of 2012, uh, BECE of River State Exam, it states that in an electric circuit, the current I measured in amperes. This is for your basic science, this is something that you can help in your basic science. Current is measured in what? Amperes. The voltage measured in what? Volts. And the resistance, arrow, measured in what? Ohms. Are connected by the formula. By what formula? Now the formula given to me here is what? I is equal to V over arrow. I is equal to V over arrow. Now the first question now there says what? Make V the subject of the formula. Make V the subject of the formula. So this is the subject we want to have. This is what we're interested in, in doing. So to do that, I'll first of all do what? Rewrite this. This becomes what? V over R V equal to what? I. V over R equal to what? I. Now, I can use balancing method but understand that at your level now, you already know the implication of balancing method. So the implication, okay, let, let's, let's go back a little, equal to what? I. So to clear a denominator, I introduce a numerator. <laughs> to clear a denominator, I introduce a numerator. How do I introduce this numerator? I multiply. So what's the denominator here? R. I now multiply that by what? Arrow. But I don't do it to just one side, I do it to both sides. That's why it's called balancing method. So what you do here is what you're going to do here. And as such, this will help me clear out or eliminate arrow. And as such, V is equal to I arrow. And that's the question given to you. And that's the answer the examiner is expecting you to give. V equal to I arrow. But is that the end of the matter? No. The question goes ahead to say, express 
arrow in terms of I and V. What then is the subject of interest now? The subject of interest is now this one. Remember, I don't know if it is in your GS3 class or in the grade 10 class, that's SS1 class, I had said that you can look for arrow from here or from here. But let's assume I'm looking for arrow from here. So I'll call this A, let me call this A, and then I'll call this B according to how the examiner has given it to me. Now from here, I will have that V is equal to IR. Remember that now, I want to make arrow the subject. And borrowing from your knowledge of equations, we said that in equations, we keep the unknown on the left hand side, I'll keep the known on the right hand side. But in change of subject or formula, we talk in terms of the subjects. The what? The subject. So in this setup, the examiner wants you to change the subject to become what arrow. So invariably you must keep this one on the left hand side. And to do that, we apply a simple idea of what? Rewriting. So I will rewrite this to become what? I arrow equal to V. Now, how do I clear R? Because I don't need R. What I want is to get what? R. And to do this, because R is a numerator, I introduce a denominator. How then do I use this denominator? I divide the denominator by what? R. So I divide this by I, and I'll divide this by I. And invariably, R will now be equal to V over I. Somebody is asking me, how is that possible? Because the purpose of introducing, of dividing both sides by I, is to remove I from your left hand side. And that solves, and that will give you your final answer to that question. Now, if you look at the question, the first thing that you should, should come to your mind is try to eliminate I always advise students, when you're giving questions in simultaneous equations, always resort to elimination method. If you read the question, you discover that it's so obvious that you can eliminate one thing. And that one thing is what? X. So what do you do? You rule and introduce your minus sign. So this minus this will take this one out of the equation. Now, what you have here, I tell students, don't assume you know if you are not seeing well. This will be 10y minus minus 9y equal to 60 minus 3. You can write 60 minus 3. Nobody will beat you. Always solve per your strength level. It's so important in an exam. So this will now give you 10y plus 9y equal to what? 57. What does this give you? 19y is equal to 57. I divide both sides by the coefficient. Here, your knowledge of multiples need to be very good because you know that 19 times 3 will give me what? 57. So this will now be y equal to what? 3. Once you've obtained a value for y, the next thing you do is you make your relevant substitution in any of these equations. So for me, I could pick this one. So I would say put y equal to 3 in 15x plus 10y equal to what? 60. So this gives you 15x plus what? 10 times 3. Don't be in a hurry. Take it gradually. Equal to what? 60. Here, I will have what 15x plus 30 equal to 60. Now, this is where a number of you need to get creative. If you look at this thing very well, 15 can divide each of the terms. You need to see it in an exam. I know some of us are in a hurry and we tend to want to use the conventional method of, oh, I can't move this to the other side. No, not every time you do that. Your ability, you need to see better. Just as the Lord was talking to Abraham, he said, as far as your eyes can see. It also applies to mathematics. God was talking to Abraham in a mathematical term. So as far as your eyes can see also, as far as your eyes can see also, you need to apply that same kind of thinking here. So I will opt to divide each of the 10 by 15. 
And I'm going to have x plus 2 equal to 4, meaning that x equal to 4 minus 2, and that is what? 2. So x is what? 2, and y is 3. Now, I always advise students, don't get worked up. Some students, after the exam, will begin to cry. I finished solving. I didn't put y equal to, I didn't finally say x equal to 2 and y equal to 3. It's, not, it's, of, it's, it's, of, it's of no consequence because once we see this answer, your sins are watched, they will give you full marks. Once we see this answer, we give you full marks. It's your right, it's your entitlement. Uh, hey, we've seen the answers, they are there. So we give you your full mark and you can smile out of the examination hall. In question five, we are giving a triangle and it says find the area of this triangle. Very simple. The base is giving us what? 8 meters. The height is giving us what? Now the perpendicular height. This is our right perpendicular height. Anytime you see height in geometry as H, it means you are talking about what? Perpendicular height. Height that is vertical. That's what it means to be perpendicular. Height that is vertical. All right. And that is what? Five meters. The area of a triangle will be equal to half this times height. And that will be what? Half times it times five. I cancel this. I cancel that before. 4 times 5, and that is 20 meters squared. Now, be careful here. The catch here is to check whether you have gotten your unit right. That's what they're going to be checking for. Whether you got your unit right. 20 meters squared. So, when solving questions like this, always ensure that your unit is correct. If you're writing exams like checkpoints, uh, which is an OVC exam, what they do is that they don't test your units. But here in Nigeria, we test units. So you must be careful. Usually, a mark is taken from you if you decide not to put the units. All right, so that concludes BECE 2020. And you could discover that the exam was very simple. All right, so we will continue shortly with um, 2013. I will trust that um, you keep revising these videos and uh, get yourself ready for this short notice exam. Mamo signing out.